We are about to cap the hour off to you by going three rounds back and forth. This three-round segment is brought to you by the Mad Kingdom Insane Supply Company. For the latest and greatest in your fight wear apparel and fashion, check out themadkingdom.com. After the first ever wheel kick knockout in the history of Dana White's contender series, the now 9-1 and one Jonas Bilharino has was not awarded a UFC contract. What are your thoughts on this? Shocking. I thought it was kind of crazy, personally. You know, that that's a guy who has been in the fold with high-level guys for quite some time. He's unofficially known as the Braz- Brazilian Conor McGregor. He was the guy who, if you remember all the way back to the countdowns and the training footage of the Conor McGregor versus Jose Aldo camp, he was the body double that was brought in to mimic Conor for Jose Aldo in those camps. It was a it was a back and forth affair that went deep into the third round after a double groin shot happened, which is pretty Uh. rare. But you then see him pull off that wheel kick. And like, I mean, I thought that it was impressive. The kid is nine and one. Yeah. You know, the the way that the Dana White Contender Series has been going, we've even mentioned this before. Like you get a contract, you get a contract, you get a contract. How if this kid showed grit, he showed determination, and to pull it off in the third round with the wheel kick, how do you not get a contract? Josh, I will tell you exactly why. I believe that they go into those seasons with a certain, certain number, number in mind of how many that they're going to sign, and they went crazy, and, it, and this has happened before in the past, and I mentioned it when it first started happening. If, if you folks go back to that conversation from those first couple of episodes of the Contender Series... It's kind of a disadvantaged position to be a fighter on one of these later cards of the Contender Series season because they're starting to get close to limits. I feel like if that happens in week one or week two, that kid gets a contract. And especially Dana mentioned that he said, hey, you know what? Any of these other organizations can pick him up right now, but they're pretty dumb, so they probably won't. So he'll probably go down to LFA, pick up a couple of fights there, and we'll still be keeping tabs on this kid and, and we'll hopefully revisit in the future. Maybe a short notice, maybe something. Yeah, who knows? I mean, he, he was a guy who was thought of to be in as high of a position to be a, an LFA title contender. He was supposed to fight Justin J. Train Gonzalez, one of Colorado's own, for the LFA 145 title prior to the pandemic. But obviously, that folded for, you know, obvious reasons. Obvious reasons. Yeah. Joe Rogan is back in the saddle for the first time in four months, which is his longest layoff in his tenure with the UFC. You happy to see the Pioneer back on the mic? Oh, hell yes. I am happy to see the legend back in the saddle. I mean, for so many of us through who are, who are longtime fans of MMA, one of the endearing sources of information for so many years has been Joe, Joe Rogan, Rogan, has been through the Joe Rogan podcast, has yeah. been through all of those one-on-ones. He doesn't do them anymore, but I I know you remember from the past those one-on-one sit-down interviews that he used to do, especially who can forget the sit-down that he had with Chael P. Sonnen, where Uh, they talked about the Noguera brothers and the infamous uh, bus that somehow ate a carrot and, you know, just some some other things, you know? You know, Joe, I'm happy to have Joe back. I'm happy to have him back, and I don't want to leave round two on a sad note, but this past weekend has showed us that we are in the process of of the changing of the guards of this entire thing that we love with Bruce Buffer sitting out this one for the first time in forever. Yep. Joe Rogan taking a couple months off. We're seeing more guys get in on the commentary and the announcing. We're in the transitional period to one day. Eventually we're going to see completely new people. So right now enjoy it while we have it, these legends with us. I could not say it. I could say it any better. Thank you. Third and final round, the rumor of a potential matchup between Nate Diaz and Hamzat Chimaev has set the internet ablaze. Is this something that you would like to see? No, no, no. Guys, no. if you love Diaz, if you love him as a person, as a fighter, why would you want this fight for him? Exactly. And some people were trying to make the case that, oh, it makes makes great sense. For who? For, for who? For the UFC, <laughs> for Chemayev, for yeah. the business. But this is typical, old school, almost Joe Silva to a T type of 
BS out there that they try to do when somebody is in the final fight of their contract and they're potentially going to leave it's out there move. for free agency. This is pure industry politics in that regard. I know that Nate is not interested in taking that fight in that no. respect. And also, you have to think that this was almost identical to a situation that happened to his big brother Nick back in the day. Nick pulls off the submission against Josh Neer in the feature fight of a main event that I believe it was Chuck Liddell against Sabral. I could be wrong on, on what that main event was, but it was a it was a big pay-per-view card that in the feature fight, same card slot that Nate had up against Leon. And then in the next fight, they buried Nick on the early prelims against Glayson Tebow. Now, Nick beat the guy who was the stylistic matchup on paper in T-Bow. He ended up beating him, goes on into free agency, signs a nice deal with Pride, and goes on and fights Gomi. But that's a, you know, they're just at two different stages of their career. This for me, Josh, I want no part of this for Nate Diaz. No, not at all. No, that that's a that's a bit that's a no for me, dog. Where's the uh, where's the Randy Jackson memes out there? But just like that, we are all out of time again there, folks. Josh, any final thoughts? Hey, um, I hope you guys had a great time. I hope you guys definitely tune in next week because we have a pretty cool interview with a really tall guy that likes to fight people. He's in <laughs> Bellator. I'm sure you know who we're talking about. We got Steve Mowry on the show next weekend, next week. Yes, sir. The undefeated, undefeated Steve Mowry, should we say. Prospect. And you can follow us along on social media. Like we say, this is the MMA plug. I'm Jordan Kurtz. Follow me along at comments from the peanut gallery. You could follow Josh Fremd at Josh Fremd MMA. The MMA plug presented to you by DenverSportsBetting.com on 98.1 FM Mile High Sports Radio. And we want to give one final thank you to our producer behind the glass in Mr. Danny Bailey. Yeah, 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 little thick bitch, fine little mama Sita. Always coolin' by the pool, drinking margaritas. Yeah, it's pippin' over here, and we ain't trippin' over pesos. I know it's good now, but luego, I can never show no love to a fake hoe.